Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Springfield Township Board of Trustees meeting. It is March 10th, 2020 at approximately um, 5.30 p.m. Uh, Mr. Burney, may we please have the roll call? Yes, Ms. Davis? Present. Mr. Burney? Present. Mr. Honolol? Present. All the trustees are present. And uh, next, I would like for us all to stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. And I would like to invite Liam Willman, Luke Miller, Philip Barker, and Jacob Hughes from PAC 626, and Donald Beef from PAC 400 to lead us in the pledge this evening. Come on up, Come on up guys. Yep. To the flag of the United States of America. Thank you very much. Next, moving on this evening, we have a public hearing on Springfield Township's uh, 2020 permanent appropriations. Mr. Gilbert, you have a presentation for I do. Us. Thank you, Mr. Honolol. As the board is aware, and as we discussed in our work session, uh, and as we do every year in March, we look to adopt our permanent appropriations, which uh, are subsequent to our temporary appropriations that we pass in late December in order for us to start the new year. Looking at the, the budgetary cycle for the township, just really quick to explain, it really starts in July with our tax budget that we pass, which accounts for the, the actual revenue and expenditures from the previous year, the actual expenditures and revenues for the first half of the year, and then a prediction or a forecast for the expenditures and revenues for the second half of, of the year, and then Subsequently, the predictions for revenue expenditures for the following year. And that's necessary in order for us to send that off to the county so that they can then uh, provide us with a certificate of resources, which basically is the legal term that allows us to appropriate a certain amount of money uh, based on expected and anticipated revenues. That generally happens um, in September where the county certifies a tax budget. In October, we then send a... a proper documentation to the county, uh, letting them know that the township authorizes the tax levies, which basically means, yes, we still need the revenue that we've been receiving in order to continue to function. In January, as, as we talk, we adopt the temporary appropriations, and then it comes to March, uh, where we adopt the permanent appropriations, and then the process starts all over again in July. Looking at this presentation, I really wanted to keep it very high level as it relates to the appropriations and then uh, answer any questions the board may have, although you're, you're fairly well versed based on our work session. Looking at the appropriations from last year, they were just over $27 million <coughs> township wide. And then in this year, they're <coughs> just a little over $31 million. And so it's about a $4.5 million increase over last year in terms of total appropriations. Unlike a lot of municipalities and other entities, the township doesn't separate it out, operations versus capital. So any capital expenses that we have in any given year, any grants we receive in any given year, or loans and proceeds from loans or bonds that we take out in any year are shown in our appropriations because we first legally have to appropriate the funds in order to expend them. So you really have to drill down to understand exactly what makes up um, our appropriations. And just because there is an increase for example, this year there's a 17% increase over last year. That doesn't necessarily mean from an operational perspective we're spending that much more. What it really shows is that in this case we've received more grants than we did last year. We did issue some bonds that we received the proceeds from those um, in 20 that weren't there in 19. So it, it fluctuates. If, if you've really seen a trend of appropriations, it really goes up and down, really dictated by those various alternative revenue sources that tend to come in. Um, every year or so. I think it's important to understand too that the township, while we're, we operate um, basically from a fund accounting standpoint, it really doesn't truly depict what we spend on any particular service or function. So what I tried to do with this chart is really show what we spend by function in the township rather than uh, per fund, which is what our really our appropriations show. And it really shows, it bears out that obviously police and fire are our highest expenditures, but then public works being third and general government being uh, fourth. If you really looked at the, the funds, though, 
it would really show general government being higher than public works, which isn't really the case. So it, it, you really have to break it out and show what it is by function to really get a true picture and depiction of, of what we spend our, our revenue on. Looking at it uh, last year over this year in terms of by department, what this is really meant to show is that in, in every function or every department, the expenses are up, which I think is, is understandable, right? Through personnel costs and everything gets more expensive every year. Uh, we, we have appropriated uh, a little more in each department this year over last. I think what's important to realize, though, is just because we appropriate the money, the funding, doesn't mean we're going to spend it. So on average, last year, we spent 84% of what we actually appropriated. So if we, if we appropriated $27.5 million, we only spent 84% of that. What this shows is while expenses go up every year, what this is meant to depict is that revenue generally stays flat for each of our departments. Because we're sort of an a la carte government, meaning we have specific levy amounts for the different departments, police, fire, and roads, uh, general fund being the only one that is, is discretionary, the, the lighter shades really show last year and the darker shades of this year's revenue, and, and you see that the revenue stays flat. Looking at the previous slide and looking at this one, it, it doesn't take long to realize that expenses go up every year, revenue stays flat, you're going to run into an issue at some point. And we'll get into that here in just a second as we look at the projections for each of the departments. So I wanted to take a second and just highlight some of the, the appropriations or the, the expected expenditures uh, in each fund. And looking at the general fund you see there, we have a, a lot of capital improvements that are necessary. Uh, we have some appropriations for park improvements, uh, a little over $100,000 or $150,000 for road salt, and we're, we're appropriating almost $1.5 million for street resurfacing just out of the general fund uh, this year. As you move into the Public Works Department's funds, which are made up by MVL, Gas Tax, Road and Bridge, and Road District, uh, you see the majority of that is taken up by basically pavement preservation, infrastructure projects, whether it be storm sewer, sidewalks, and then there is some uh, they are appropriated for the replacement of one of our fleet trucks, as well as uh, almost $40,000 in street sweeping. We do contract that out because we find it to be more economical for us to contract that service out than own our own street sweeper and having our own personnel do it. Looking at the police district fund, I think one of the major things that we see here, is, which is true every year, is we appropriate almost $400,000 a year in 911 fees. I think what people don't realize is every time you call 911, it costs Springfield Township $15 every time someone calls 911. Now, that's been reduced this year, and we expect that number to go down, but we, in order to remain conservative in our projections, we left um, that particular fee amount in there. But it, it is very expensive for us. When you look at 25 to 26,000 calls for service every year just for police, at $15 a piece, you can tell it, it doesn't take long for that number to grow exponentially. We do try and replace our police vehicles as they, as they age, so we do have uh, some funding in there to buy four new police cruisers. And overall, it's about 4% appropriation increase over last year. A lot of that is made up by uh, salary increases for our, our police officers, which we have 51 right now? Yes, 51. 51 sworn police officers. So um, anytime uh, you, know, you have that many personnel in one department, that, that does get costly. Same in the fire department, you, you see some capital improvements. Uh, some money in there for tools and equipment, which the fire u utilizes uh, pretty extensively. Uh, we do have funding in there for rechassis of an existing ambulance. Essentially what that means is taking the existing box on an ambulance and putting it on a new truck. Uh, we, we may uh, look at doing that this year, which is why we appropriated it. And again, same with police, you're looking at about a 4% increase over the previous year's appropriation. I know in that department, being very uh, personnel driven, we have approximately, what, Chief, 70-something employees, and you include full and part-time? Correct. Yeah, just in the fire department. So the majority of our costs do go toward personnel because those two departments are very uh, personnel, um, heavy, heavily dependent. So infrastructure spending and trending over the last five years, if you look back uh, from 2016 to today, we're, we're averaging uh, well over $2 million a year in spending toward infrastructure. We, we talked about this um, in, in meetings uh, previously where there were some, I guess, thought 
relative to where is the JEDGE revenue going. Well, you can see we're spending uh, a good portion of that, well over a million dollars a year is going toward infrastructure, which I think is unprecedented in this community's history. If you, if you total that up, and you look since 2016, it's been almost $11.5 million we put toward roads. That's 90 streets. So the township has 400 streets that we're required to maintain, and we've resurfaced almost a quarter of those in the past five years. And, and that is largely uh, been able to happen because of the JEDGE revenue. Moving on and talking about the projections, which we, we talked about just a second ago, what you see is the green line and the purple line. The green line is total revenue available. What that means is that's revenue that's generated in any given year in addition to the carryover from the previous year. So any money that we, that we brought in that we haven't spent in the previous year is added to the revenue from the, the subsequent year, and that gets you your total revenue available to spend. The purple is the expenditure. What you want to see in the general fund is for those two lines to stay as far apart as possible, right? You want to make sure that you always have more money than you're spending. Why that looks the way it did is because for we received, that's when the JEDGE was passed, and we started to see some increase in revenue, and we slowly started to ramp up expenditures and in infrastructure. What you see where the green light starts to go down is that now we're eating away at that carryover number. So a better way to think about it, like in your household budget, your, your savings. So you have your salary every year, and you have a savings. Well, right now, with our infrastructure spending, we're drawing down on that savings in addition to spending what we're bringing in every year. So in order to be sustainable, we're going to have to level off the infrastructure spending and hopefully increase our revenue to make sure those two lines um, never intersect. However, when you start to look at our, our levy-driven departments like police and fire, we know it's inevitable at some point for those two lines to intersect. And that's what we call the bow tie effect. So when we pass a levy, we know we're going to be bringing in more money than we're going to spend for a period of time because we know at some point we're going to start spending more than we're bringing in, so we have to live off that carryover, that savings that we build up in the first few years. We haven't received an increase in revenue for the police department since 2009. Is that correct? That's correct. So at, at, at the time we passed the levy in 2009, we expected it to take the last five or six years. Obviously, we've exceeded that. 10 to 11 years. So we expect to have to come out for a levy here relatively soon in order to avoid what you see there. When those two lines intersect, then we're in trouble because now we're spending more than we're bringing in. And it's inevitable with levy-driven departments. We know this happens, and it's a kudos to uh, Chief, Line, or Chief uh, Browder and his staff and obviously the board being fiscally conservative to stretch that levy out as long as they have. Same with fire. You see the lines start to intersect about the same time. The last time the fire department received an increase in revenue was 2011. It was a five-year um, levy. It was renewed in 2016, but again, it didn't increase revenue. It just kept the revenue the same that, it, that was passed in 2011. So it hasn't received an increase in revenue since about the same time as police. They've been able to stretch that revenue, again, twice as much as what was originally predicted when those levies were passed as well. So again... We need to do something before we get to that area where the lines intersect. So in, in conclusion, we really, our, our budgetary considerations are what we, we need to focus on is sustainability of police and fire district funds. So how do we do that? Obviously, it's, it's with stretching levies like we have for twice as long as they originally predicted the last, but also it's looking at what is, an in, what is a, a, a modest increase that's going to allow us to continue the operations and sustain the operations that police and fires have been able to uh, provide over the last 10 years? Infrastructure spending and the impacts of the general fund. Obviously, as we talked, the general fund is the most discretionary of our funding uh, sources. So it's, it's ideally the place that we take revenue from to put toward infrastructure, but that's going to be dictated by how much can we actually sustain? How, how much can we put toward infrastructure every year and sustain that going forward? And that's, again, going to be largely dependent on what happens with the JEDGE revenue. We know that the JEDGE revenue is more volatile than property tax, so we have to be conservative in our estimates so that um, we don't get in a situation where we're, we're spending more than they're bringing in in the general fund. And again, as on the agenda tonight, it's looking at alternative sources of revenue like the motor vehicle license fee. 
And then at the end of the day, really what we look for when we do appropriations and the board is, is acutely aware of this, is we're constantly looking at ways of gaining efficiencies and increasing revenue. And our, our, our goal at, at, at all costs is to avoid property tax increases. However, in, in, mech, in, in departments like police and fire, it's inevitable. We have no other choice um, than to come back to the taxpayers to continue operations for police and fire. And I think it's important to note that while we have residents in the audience tonight, that the township makes up 25% of your property tax bill. So 75% of the taxes you pay in property taxes don't come to Springfield Township. They go to the school and to the county. So everything we've talked about here tonight, whether it be public works, police, fire, parks, general government, is all made up of 25% of your property tax bill. So we know that, that the taxes are, are, are an issue for some people, and we know that it's a concern for some, and we agree, which is why that we're trying to limit our increases as, as infrequent as possible, um, given the fact that it's been 10 years, and, and at the same time, limit those to police and fire and find other ways to fund our other operations. So that concludes my presentation. Again, very high-level presentation for the, the uh, permit appropriations and um, answering questions of the board at this time. Thank you, Chris. I know we've gone through, the, the board has seen all this, these slides and had these discussions and we had budget, uh, we had meetings, workshops where we discussed our budget in detail for the coming year and the appropriations. Um, I don't have any specific questions. I mean, I think you're, you're right. We, we're, we always walk a fine line. How can we run a good government, provide the services that our citizens want? as efficiently as we can. Uh, you know, I found out real early when I got on this board that, you know, you could say, well, we're never going to raise taxes. Well, you have to because, you know, to attract good people to work in our police department, our fire department, our, our uh, roads department, we have to have people who, uh, we have to attract good talent and, and they're not going to come here if we're not paying, you know, fair, fair market wages. And that's where most of our salaries, most of the expenses in the township are the people that we hire to perform those services. But, you know, we'd like to hear from you. Is there anybody here that has any questions this evening on any of the appropriation budgets, any of the issues? No? And, and I would Chris? be remiss if I didn't mention Kim Cox is in the audience now, the township's finance director. She obviously is the brains behind this operation when we look at the, the permanent and temporary appropriations and then just budgeting throughout the year. So um, she, she is undoubtedly invaluable when it comes to us preparing these appropriations every year. So I just wanted to make sure that we recognize Kim and her hard work. Mark, do you have any questions? I do not. Okay. Chris, you did such a great job. You answered everybody's questions. <laughs> Clear as mud. Yes. All right. Well, thank you. No, thank you for that presentation. It's, it's, an, it's an important part of what we do here at Springfield Township, that we take the budgeting very seriously. The uh, next thing on our moving forward with our agenda is approval of minutes from our February 11th uh, 2020 public hearing and regular meeting, our February 19th, 2020 special meeting, which was a bid opening, a February 19th, 2020 special meeting public hearing, and our February 25th, 2000 regular work session. Do we have a motion to approve those minutes? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Next, uh, turning to Mr. Burning, uh, our fiscal officer, do we have a financial report? Yes, Mr. Honolol, for the month ending February 29th, 2020, the township expenditures were $1,604,401.51, and our receipts were $1,749,965.57. The ending cash balance of $17,722,203.30 includes obligations for expenditures, payroll, regular operating costs, ongoing capital improvements, projects, and investments. What I do request is a motion to approve the receipts, warrants, payroll expenditures, update, and current revenue and reports for the period ending February 29th, 2020. Do I have a motion? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 
Motion carries, and I just want everyone to know that the financial reports are available at the township offices during regular business hours or on our website 24-7. Thank you, Joe. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. Next, moving on to departmental action and discussion items. Mr. Gilbert, uh, do we have some action items this evening? We do. Thank you, Mr. Hunterlow. Looking at the first, or actually the first and only action item, we do have an addition, a uh, proposed addition to our approved caterer list. Soul Secrets <coughs> Catering, apologize. Um, Finley Kitchen, 1719 Elm Street, Cincinnati, Ohio, 45202 is um, being proposed to be added to our approved caterer list. I'm assuming they've met all the criteria. They Do we have a motion to approve them or to add them to our approved caterer list? So moved. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, and looking at the discussion items today, I want to turn it over to Chief Leininger to give a brief update and an explanation of the univer our current agreement with the University of Cincinnati Medical Center Mobile Stroke Unit. Mr. Gilbert, it being honored to update uh, you and the board. Uh, I'm very excited to announce the collaboration between the University of Cincinnati and Springfield Township Board of Trustees to bring state-of-the-art stroke mitigation technology to Springfield Township and surrounding communities. A mobile stroke unit that looks like a large ambulance will be staffed by a nurse, paramedic, emergency medical technician, and a CT tech, and will all have a direct telecommunication link with the neurologist. The mobile stroke unit will carry an onboard CT scanner and stroke medicines, one of which is TPA. The patient will be treated in the MSU, the mobile stroke unit, while on the scene and then be transported to a hospital with stroke intervention capabilities. The mobile stroke unit will be operated out of State Fire, Springfield Township Fire Station 79, which is right next door, on Winton Road from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., seven days per week. The mobile stroke unit is considered a research project that is privately funded by the University of Cincinnati's Medical Center an operation will begin in April 2020. Thanks, Chief. So I, I think this is another example of the, the innovative partnerships and, and services that Springfield Township residents can expect out of our, out of our departments. And um, I've, I've seen the piece of equipment, and it's pretty remarkable. And... Uh, Hopefully it doesn't have to be used that often. However, I think we're, we're glad that, that it's here close by if it, if it is necessary. Yeah, it's gonna be used throughout the county, but it's gonna be housed here in Springfield Township, correct? That is correct, yes. Um, the, if you kind of go out and do an imaginary circle, it's supposed to respond within about 15 minute response time of station 79, which is right here. So um, it should get right now about two thirds of the county. Uh, will be uh, able to take advantage of this resource. But uh, what's important to know is that our tax dollars through Springfield Township, we're not spending those to fund this operation. This is strictly a collaboration. Uh, I think it's important that we all can benefit from this research. And uh, there's only 25 of these mobile stroke units across the country. And we're gonna have one right here in Springfield Township. So that's, that's a pretty amazing statistic. And we're very optimistic that uh, it's going to do great things and people that do suffer a stroke will be able to uh, respond quickly and give them the, the appropriate care that they need, get them to a, the appropriate uh, medical facility, and then hopefully we can return them to their quality of life that they once had. So that's our goal. And I know, Chief, the reason why it's being stationed here has something to do with your, you and your team. Well, it, it is. We've, we've fought hard for that. Um, we have a great relationship with our, our, uh, our hospitals, and uh, also we, uh, we're just very intrigued with the technology. A big part of that is telemedicine, that we would like to eventually incorporate that into our own EMS operations. But more importantly, I think, and I want to kind of grab some of Kim Flam's thunder here, is on the back of our business cards, it says to the center, center to it all. And that's it. When they were first talking about where would be a good location to have this mobile stroke unit? Well, it was quite obviously we want to be here in Springfield Township. Was it 
which is at the center of Hamilton County, which is the best place logistically to provide these services. So to me, it was just a no-brainer. Um, and the other thing is I also wanted to be very selfish. I live in this community, and I want to provide this resource to, uh, to all of our residents. As quickly as possible. Yes, sir, that's correct. Moving on, uh, personnel update. Looks like the only activity we had for uh, February was in the fire department. We had the resignation of a part-time medic firefighter, Brandon Norman. Otherwise, pretty quiet uh, month in the various departments. Next, I'll turn it over to Kim for our community invention programs. Thank you. Um, last week, Arts Connect held our first all-school theater open house um, program, and we are gonna be doing um, a theater production that is open to all students, regardless of what school that they go to. So we're hosting a free audition um, theater workshop on Saturday, March 28th at Mount Healthy High School from 1 to 3 p.m., and that is open for any student between the ages of 10 to 17. And then the only other event that we've got going on is a uh, fundraiser. We have a quarter auction that is going to be held on April the 17th. It's um, in partnership with the Wyoming Recreation Foundation and Arts Connect. Um, Wyoming is fundraising for a stage, and Arts Connect is fundraising for pottery and woodshop studio equipment. So this is um, an event. It's $10 for a bid paddle, lots of auction items, and all of the auction items will either be one, two, three, or four quarters. Lots of fun. That's it? <laughs> All right. Uh, the, Sounds like fun. The, the board has copies of the departmental activity reports, and unless there are any questions regarding those, that does conclude my report. I will add that if you look at the first resolution on the agenda, it is misprinted. It actually should say fiscal year 2020. Um, but it does say fiscal year 2019, so I just want to draw your attention to that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Gilbert. Um, with that, we will move on to our resolutions this evening. The first resolution we have is resolution number 26, 2020, adopting permanent appropriations for fiscal year 2020. Do we have a, a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Davis. Aye. Mr. Burnham. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 27, 2020, levying a tax on motor vehicle licenses pursuant to Ohio Revised Code section 4504.18. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Davis. Aye. Mr. Burnham. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 28, 2020, authorizing the trade-in of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit-for-use motor vehicles, road machinery, equipment, or tools in the Public Works Department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Davis. Aye. Mr. Burnham. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 29, 2020, authorizing the filing of an application pursuant to revised code section 2981.12 and revised code section 3719.11 to authorize the destruction, retention, and or auction of property that has been surrendered, unclaimed, lost, abandoned, stolen, forfeited, or otherwise lawfully seized. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Davis. Aye. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Resolution carries. Going on to resolution number 30, 2020, it's authorizing the private sale of unneeded and unfit for use property in the police department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Hanlon? Aye. Resolution carries. Next, we have resolution number 31, 2020, authorizing sale by internet auction of unneeded, obsolete, or unfit for use property in the police department. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Davis. Aye. Mr. Burney. Aye. Mr. Hanlon. 
Aye. Resolution carries. Next is resolution number 32, 2020, declaring nuisances pursuant to Ohio Revised Code section 505.87 at various listed properties within Springfield Township and authorizing statutory actions necessary to abate the nuisances. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Davis. Aye. Mr. Burning. Aye. Mr. Hanelow. Aye. Resolution carries. And finally, we have resolution number 33, 2020, authorizing the filing of an application pursuant to revised code section 2981.12 and revised code section 3719.11 to authorize the destruction, retention, and or auction of property that has been surrendered, unclaimed, lost, abandoned, stolen, forfeited, or otherwise lawfully seized. And to, while, while I know that's the same resolution as you read a few seconds ago, they are for two different departments. One is for the police department. The last one you just read is for DART, our, our Drug and Abuse Reduction Task Force. That's a regional task force. I see a lot of drugs on here. <laughs> uh, what do you do with them? We uh, file for an application, and uh, they are destroyed, um, usually burning. by burning. Yes. Burning, that's what I meant. You burn them. I just wondered. Firearms is a whole other yeah, sport. I can't believe all the heroin and just you get a lot of serious stuff. Okay. Do we have a motion? So moved. Seconded. Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Burning? Aye. Ms. Honol Mr. Honolo? Aye. Resolution carries. Uh, next, do we have any old business before the board this evening? I do not. Uh, just under uh, uh, old business, just very briefly, I would uh, point out that the resolution that we passed earlier this evening, this was resolution number 27, 2020, levying a tax on motor vehicle licenses. That's a $5 per year tax that was authorized by the Ohio Revised Code. Uh, we had several public hearings here. I had two public hearings here at the township, listened to people's comments. The money from that $5 tax will go exclusively towards repairing roads here in Springfield Township. The uh, road repairs are our biggest, the one biggest financial challenge that we have facing us. And uh, we thought that in, it, it is, given the fact that we've not had an increase in our road levy since 19, 1995, um, we, you know, the, the $500,000 we get a year just does, isn't enough. So this will be, it'll be a modest increase, but it will help us. And it's uh, uh, going to be instrumental in helping us secure other grant funding. Uh, a lot of times to get a grant, you have to be able to match. You know, the state will say, we'll give you a, you know, we'll give you 500,000 or a million dollars, but you have to match it. And so this will help us with that so we can stretch our tax dollars as far as possible. But I just want to kind of clarify that if anybody was uh, wondering what was the background on that. Uh, is there any new business this evening? I do not have any, Joe. Okay. Uh, next, we'll move on to citizens' participation. If there's anyone here this evening that would like to address the board, we would ask that you come up to the podium, state your name and address, and, um, you know, please let us know what your concerns are. Is there anyone that would like to address the board this evening? Any of these young men in the front row have a question? I think we're going to speak to you when the meeting's over, but uh, it appears that there is not this evening. Um, I do know that we're going to need a uh, executive session. For possible pending litigation? Yes. And... Um, uh, so the board will go into executive session here at some point. Um, do we have a motion to adjourn this public meeting to uh, move into executive session for the reasons stated? So moved. Seconded. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Roll call. Yep. Roll call. Oh, oh. Sorry. Christy, Ms. Davis? Aye. Mr. Burney? Aye. Mr. Honolaw? Aye. Executive session.